Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, scholars and dignitaries, welcome to another episode. Welcome to my world. So, the Roman Catholic Church, the Church of Christ, has been a blessing and a grace for the whole world, and especially America. They've given us a path to civilization. They've given us a path to holiness, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the seven sacraments, prayers of adoration and atonement, penance and fasting, and a very special grace, religious women, nuns. These religious women have had far-reaching effects for people in virtually every country and society, and they've graced America for hundreds of years with their courage and dedication, their wisdom, their perseverance, and yes, especially their faith. And all of this is done in full and absolute dedication to the Lord and doing His work on earth. For hundreds of years, Catholic nuns have worked to make this great country what it is today. They work tirelessly, morning, noon, and night, sometimes against the greatest odds, giving all and asking for nothing for themselves in return. And make no mistake, they are some of our greatest unsung heroes. There are more than 400 orders, communities of nuns, and from the very beginning, when they first arrived in America nearly 300 years ago, religious sisters built schools, colleges, hospitals, orphanages, homeless shelters, and many other social institutions for the poor, for orphans, the disabled, and the less fortunate. Here's a picture of Chicago's oldest hospital, founded by the Sisters of Mercy in 1852. On the one hand, as religious, they strove to spread the good news of the Bible and teach and spread the faith and the gospel, but then in service, they worked as nurses, teachers, and social workers. They endeavored to provide basic levels of health and education in a charitable format to youth, the elderly, the homeless, the sick, the disabled, and all in need, again, without thought to either compensation or self-promotion. For instance, just take a look at Mother Frances Cabrini. She founded the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and was given the mission to come to the United States to help the thousands of Italian immigrants in New York who were suffering chaos and poverty. Arriving without any money, she was able to find donations to start schools and orphanages, and during her lifetime, Mother Cabrini founded 67 missions, including schools, hospitals, orphanages, and child care centers. In fact, Mother Cabrini won, by more than 100% of the votes, the honor of having been nominated as a woman who has done more to help New York City than anyone else. Governor Andrew Cuomo authorized a statue of Mother Cabrini, and Cuomo called her, quote, the personification of the Italian-American legacy, noting everything that she did for the poor and sick in New York. Today, the missionary sisters work as teachers, nurses, social workers, and so on in the United States and 17 countries on six continents throughout the world. Mother Cabrini died on December 22, 1917 at Columbus Hospital in Chicago. She was beatified in 1938 and canonized a saint on July 7, 1946. Another religious group is the Sisters of St. Joseph, founded in Valais, France. The general purpose of these sisters is the glory of God through the sanctification of its members by means of their three vows, a vow of poverty, obedience, and chastity, and their special objective is the salvation and service of others through works of charity, including schools, hospitals, and social services. The Sisters of St. Joseph frequently suffered for their works, often horribly. In 1793 in France, the convents and chapels of the sisters were confiscated and their journals and property was destroyed. Many of these nuns were killed, martyred. Hundreds of convents, schools, and charitable institutions belonging to the Sisters of St. Joseph were suppressed and confiscated at that time, and the religious were obligated to seek safety and shelter in other lands. So in the 1800s, the order came to America. In 1873, the Sisters of St. Joseph opened their first schools in Boston, including an academy, parochial schools, and a school for the deaf. Other chapters spread and grew strong in Philadelphia, Buffalo, Vermont, Chicago, Cleveland, Kansas, Detroit, and throughout New York. 
1864 in Rochester, New York, four sisters of St. Joseph from Buffalo opened first an asylum for orphaned boys in Rochester, then five private educational institutions, then three more orphan asylums, a hospital, a home for the aged, and then 40 parochial schools, including one high school. From St. Louis to St. Augustine, the increasing demands for the Sisters of St. Joseph and their works from all parts of the United States grew to encompass hundreds of educational institutions, including colleges, academies, conservatories, parochial schools, orphan asylums, special schools for Native Americans, schools for the deaf mute, hospitals, soup kitchens, and other social service agencies. The order now serves in Canada, in England, India, France, Denmark, Italy, South America, and elsewhere throughout the world. The Sisters of St. Joseph can be found in soup kitchens, shelters, universities, schools, hospitals, courtrooms, prisons, nursing homes, and hospices. They are educators, lawyers, doctors, nurses, family therapists, social workers, patient advocates, spiritual directors, parish ministers, physical therapists, and they serve in many other roles. This one order of Catholic religious alone provided more comfort, food, education, healing, and ministry to inmates, patients, and the poor than most governments ever thought of doing. Over 600 Catholic nuns served as nurses in the Civil War, helping both Union and Confederate soldiers. Nuns arrived after the Battle of Shiloh to tend to the 5,000 wounded, waiting in a, quote, particularly wet miserable version of hell, and they set up the initial care for the 50,000 wounded after Gettysburg. These Catholic sisters won the goodwill of others because of their toughness, their courage, their excellent skills, and their compassion for all those who suffer. Besides the Civil War, Catholic sisters showed how they were heroes in the frontier communities of the Wild West, where Catholic nuns talked down bandits and roughnecks, lugged pianos into the wilderness, and helped to tame the West with the Gospels and teachings of Jesus. They served during the gold rush, the San Francisco earthquake, the influenza epidemic, World War I, World War II, and the civil rights movement, and even to this day in their work with natural catastrophes, such as with Hurricane Katrina. The U.S. Catholic school system is the largest private school system in the world, largely established and run by Catholic nuns, and more than 110 U.S. colleges and universities were founded by Catholic sisters, and many of the greatest leaders of this country were graduates of their universities and have been influenced by their teachings. Throughout periods of struggle and controversy, Catholic sisters have opened orphanages, schools, hospitals, colleges, universities, and provided other social services that have served hundreds of millions of Americans. In fact, today, approximately one in six U.S. hospital patients is cared for in a Catholic facility. Catholic nuns have been involved in the addictions treatment community, even giving support early on during the founding of Alcoholics Anonymous. They have contributed greatly to science, including pioneering research in the discovery of DNA. They continue to advocate for social and global human rights issues, pro-life issues, and issues such as climate change, human trafficking, poverty, and nuclear disarmament. And of course, there are also cloistered communities as well. Cloistered nuns live apart from society. They believe that their vocation is to witness the primacy of prayer and fasting in the church and to serve by intervening for others before God. Many live a very strict life, including spending their days in silence and isolation and giving up not only the outside world, but also all worldly pleasures, however small. In other words, total sacrifice and self-deprivation for the greater glory of God. There are many other orders of religious who also dedicate themselves to the relief of society. The Sisters of Charity, the Merino Sisters, Dominican Sisters, Sisters of St. Francis, Sisters of Mercy, Sisters of Divine Compassion, and so on. In 1965, there were about 180,000 nuns in 400 communities in the United States. Today, it's estimated that there are about 200 communities with under 50,000 sisters, and their average age is 69. These women have proven themselves beyond doubt as the finest of the human race. And why? Because 
they strive to be holy. And they have done so and done it well in the name of the faith and the one who sent them. These religious have sacrificed so much. They've sacrificed with their lives for God and humanity. So how much good have they done? Again, these are private services actually provided when government itself failed to provide any substantial level of service. These religious run 7,000 Catholic elementary and high schools nationwide and established 110 Catholic universities. Nuns traditionally have worked in the numerous medical services run by the church, although now with fewer and fewer resources. They work in some 585 Catholic hospitals in the U.S., serving more than 84 million patients. They work in residential homes for children, including orphanages, which serve 714,000 young people. In America, just through the 150 Catholic Charities Network and its affiliates, the religious sisters help provide help and hope for some 10 million people, regardless of religious, social, or economic backgrounds. And this doesn't even account for all the outreach services and local neighborhood services, services to at-risk populations, food banks and food pantries, shelters, mental health and addiction counseling programs, soup kitchens, pregnancy services, housing services, financial assistance, help with clothing needs, help with utilities bills, prescription drug co-payments, and so on. One service even operates a traumatic brain injury program. You often see religious women serving with bereavement groups, cancer support groups, groups for separated and divorced people, homebound ministries, and especially ministries at local jails and prisons. They help the poor, the forgotten, and the lost, again, regardless of religious, social, or economic backgrounds. And this is just in America, Worldwide, in Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America, and especially in the mission lands, nuns help to serve in some 42,000 schools, 1,600 hospitals, 6,000 clinics, 780 leprosariums, in AIDS clinics, health clinics, shelters, food pantries, and in some 12,000 other initiatives of a charitable and social nature. Nuns, as a group and as a holy group, have suffered more than any other group in history. Just in World War II, there were convents confiscated, churches closed, and mass arrests of nuns throughout Europe because the nuns helped the Jewish people. For instance, 11 Polish nuns from the Holy Family of Nazareth were shot by the Gestapo at Belarus in August 1943 after the nuns volunteered to die in the place of local villagers. And many others were called helping Jews and were either imprisoned, murdered, or sent to Germany as slaves. Nuns have been slaughtered throughout history for their beliefs. In the Spanish Civil War, in the French Revolution, in the Russian Civil War, Nuns were beaten with sticks and killed or buried alive in the Chinese Cultural Revolution. They've been persecuted in communist countries, in the Congo, and even today, nuns have suffered murders and even mass murders in Islamic and in third world countries. The religious sisters have stood under a bright light and lifted it higher in this country during our darkest hours than any other group. These holy people do not just talk about religion, but they live it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They have given their lives to God in its entirety, and they've helped stream forward a river of love and faith that began 2,000 years ago. So even with the criticisms of Catholicism, the fact is that it has done 99.9% .9 good for America and for the whole world, and it has accomplished more for the civilization and progress of the world and the dignity and integrity of humanity than any other individual or government or religion on earth. And that's been in large part because of the dedication and mission and personal cost and sacrifices by these wonderful religious and holy women. They have taken vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and above all, they strive to fulfill their mission to serve, a mission of faith, a mission based upon his will on earth, and that's the most noble work of all. Hey, be safe, be well. If you see a nun, offer her a smile and a thank you, and make a donation to help support her local convent, and may God bless.